This video is all about body fat scales. How do they work? Are they accurate? And is it worth using them? So the too long didn't watch version of this video is that body fat scales aren't accurate at all. In fact, most research shows that body fat scales do a very poor job of tracking individual changes in body composition over time. So what that means is that you could train hard and eat right for a month or two, lose some fat, gain some muscle, but the scales might say that your body fat percentage has gone up. I like to think of the numbers churned out by a body fat test, a bit like the various cryptocurrency price predictions that are doing the rounds at the moment. Now, some of those predictions may turn out to be right, but a large number will also turn out to be completely wrong. And if you put too much faith in those predictions, it's very easy to end up making some bad decisions. And this isn't a problem that's limited to body fat scales. No body fat test, be it DEXA, the BOD pod, underwater weighing, skinfold calipers, or whatever it happens to be, can actually measure the amount of fat you have. The only way to measure your body fat is to strip all the fat out of your body, put it on a scale and weigh it. Now this method is highly accurate. The only real downside is that you have to be dead in order for it to happen. So a body fat test is less of a measurement than it is an estimate. It's essentially a rough guess about what your body fat percentage really is. And it's one that's often a lot less accurate than people realize. Now this is especially true with body fat scales, which are probably the most popular body fat test out there, mainly because they're relatively cheap, they're quick, and they're easy to use. You take your socks off and you step on the scales, which then send out a weak electrical current, and this current runs up one leg, down the other, and the scales then measure the level of resistance or impedance to the flow of that current. Now, different tissues in your body provide different levels of resistance. So muscle, for example, provides less resistance than fat because it contains more water. And the idea is that by analyzing the level of resistance to the current, the scale will know how much lean tissue and fat you have, which it then uses to come up with an estimate of your body fat percentage. Which sounds great in theory, but there are some big problems with it. And the first and probably most obvious problem with regular body fat scales is the fact that they miss out large segments of your body. So if you stand on a set of foot to foot body fat scales, for example, the current is just gonna go up one leg and down the other. So the device is really only gathering data from your legs and making assumptions about what's going on in the rest of your body. I often get messages from people who own a body fat scale and they swear blind that it's accurate, mainly on the basis that it's consistent. That is when they get on the scales, then they get off, then they get back on again two minutes later, the scales show similar results. And because it's giving them much the same number from one reading to the next, they think that it must be right. The problem here is they're confusing consistency with accuracy. So multiple back-to-back -back readings will tell you how close the numbers are when repeated measurements are made, which is known as test retest reliability. But that isn't the same thing as accuracy. To determine accuracy, you need to compare the readings you get from body fat scales to some kind of reference method. And when it comes to body composition, the current reference method is something called the four compartment model. Now this is a way of assessing body composition that divides the body into four components, mineral, water, fat, and protein. And it looks at each one separately, then uses that information to work out how much fat and muscle you have. Now at the moment, the four compartment model is considered by many as the benchmark test or the gold standard against which other body fat tests are measured. When scientists have compared body fat scales with the four compartment model, the results generally haven't been impressive. And it doesn't seem to matter what type of device you use, whether it's the basic body fat scales, which have got the foot to foot electrodes, the units you hold, which have got the hand to hand electrodes, 
all the devices where you've got electrodes for your hands and feet, they all work in much the same way. The size of the error is such that one of these devices might put you at, let's say, 20% body fat, but your true body fat percentage might be 13%. It might be 18%. It might be 25%. The reality is that you just don't know. Some say that it doesn't matter if a body fat test is out by a few percentage points here or there. As long as it's consistently inaccurate, you can use it to track your progress over time. The problem is the body fat scales have been shown to overestimate fat percentage in people who are relatively lean, while they underestimate it in people who are carrying around a lot more fat. So what that means is the more fat you have, the more likely it is that body fat scales will underestimate your body fat percentage. And on the flip side, the leaner you are, the more likely it is that they'll overestimate your body fat percentage. In other words, they're not just inaccurate, they're inconsistently inaccurate. Now let's say you step on some body fat scales and your body fat percentage comes out at 20%. You go away and you eat right, you train hard for a couple of months and you might lose five or eight or 10 pounds of fat. But when you go back for another test, the scales might say that your body fat percentage is still 20%. That's how large the error can be. And the same thing holds true for muscle growth. You could gain five or six pounds of muscle over a period of several months, but the scales might show that you hadn't gained any muscle at all. And you'd come away with the impression that whatever you'd been doing to generate those results didn't work when actually it did. So if you are using body fat scales, don't take the results too seriously. You can't rely on them to tell you what kind of shape you're in at the moment or how much progress you've made after weeks or months of training. I think at best, they give you a very, very rough estimate of your body composition. At worst, they give you a completely skewed picture of what's really going on and they can easily send you off in completely the wrong direction. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll be back with another video very soon.